This will be an update of the rebending of the aileron test section that I had done in a previous video. As it turns out, uh, of course, the original problem was that I'd made a mistake in my drawing, and this uh, this length was longer than it should have been. I had it set to, to 97, and it should have been 94. And but actually, in the course of bending this second uh, this replacement uh, test section, I actually realized I'd made a second mistake. That uh, show you here the problem. The problem is when you look at this. This is sort of this is oriented the same way that this is, and you notice that this has an acute angle of 73 degrees, and I bent mine to 90 degrees. And I think probably what happened, of course, part of it may have been just the distraction of the video, of making the video, but the other thing is, is that I had neglected to actually uh, indicate this angle right here of 73 degrees. So for some reason I got into my head, uh, probably a combination of doing the flaps, uh, which did have 90 degrees, and also having done this bend, I got 90 degrees in my head. So. You know, whenever you're doing something like this, it's always a good idea, even if it seems obvious, to clearly mark every uh, dimension that you can, including like, including like this. You know, don't think that, well, since this says, um, since this says 16, point, 16 degrees or 16.8 degrees, I'll remember to do 90 minus. Uh, you know, like I said, you, when you're scratch building like this, you want to do everything you can to, to minimize any possibility of, of error or misunderstanding. So with that in mind, I mean, I've you know, gone ahead and done the bend. I've corrected it and, of course, uh, corrected my plans as well. Uh, at this point, I've bent this, uh, bent this section, which is good. I've bent this. Uh, the dimensions are good. So uh, I'm going to show again the bending of, of this uh, acute angle right here uh, by hand because I've come up with uh, something different to use as far as a, a spacer to stick inside here. So we'll cover that here shortly. What you're looking at here is may give you a sense of deja vu in, the, in that this is the uh, same type of situation as, uh, that I was into in the prior video of going ahead and manually uh, bending this aileron section. Of course, I've already pointed out the little mistake that I that I made over here. Of course, in addition to the to the length issue that I had from the plans, but one other thing I needed to figure out when I did my demo before, I was using uh, these pieces of rubber as a spacer, and uh, the problem with that is, is that this is really about all that I've got. So it was, it was good to use this for a test case, but I needed to find something a little different. And fortunately, I was able to. Uh, on Amazon, they sell this uh, quarter-inch uh, thick rubber material that looks like it may be just perfect. It has just the right amount of, of give to it. Uh, and, of course, it comes in five-foot lengths. So... I've already got five feet of this right now, and I'll buy another five feet if this current test checks out. So we'll go ahead and, and get this get this piece dropped in. And looking on my monitor here, of course, I seem to be taping this at the same time of day, and I've got a little bit of sunlight coming in my window, so some stuff may appear a little washed out, which I'm sorry, I apologize for that ahead of time. Uh, so at this point, we've gone ahead and gotten this set up. We'll grab our board. And we'll go ahead and get this pressed down so that we're we're even up here, and we'll see how well this uh, how well this this piece of rubber works. see what that's looking like. Not looking too bad. It'd probably have been nice if there was maybe if they sold a thickness that was maybe like three sixteenths instead of quarter inch just so I could get just a little bit of get a little bit of extra press in there. But at least this way with the quarter inch strip in here, even if I push on this all the way, there's no way that I can uh, crush this, really crush this down any more than, than the uh, eighth inch diameter. I think what we've got there is looking, looking pretty good. It's not, uh, I mean, it does rest up some, but I can pull this back. So we'll go with that and take some measurements and, and see what it looks like. At this point, the second aileron test section has been bent and the results are, are looking pretty good. Of course, this is the 
this is the this is the drawing and then just trying to overlay that on you can see that uh, we're getting a little bit better fit of course this has got the proper angle on it now and then I also went ahead and took Tesh measurements uh, so for this side target was 315 actual 314 and for this side actual was 310 target according to my drawing was 308 but then in the plans it actually has 310 so uh, you know for whatever reason good fortune or whatever I mean this part does happen to happen to match up either way it's just a couple of millimeters difference uh, I'm not gonna not gonna worry about it at this point and then for the final side uh, the target was 92 uh, 0.5 roughly going according to the drawings and the length was short enough I was able to uh, you know measure it with my calipers and it came up with you know basically 92.5 so uh, everything's looking pretty good at this point and we'll go ahead and move forward with uh, making the making the rows. What you're looking at here is a layout of what will of what will be the form for creating the ribs for the aileron. Uh, but what I want to do is uh, just sort of do a sanity check on the drawings to make sure that everything uh, fits up properly. Now at first I was thinking I would just trim this off right or you know trim this profile out and fit it inside of my aileron test section uh, but then I got to thinking that I've got all these magnets I should be able to just sort of take the profile and just sort of pin it in place and be able to check and make sure that everything lines up the way that I'm expecting it to. So what we'll do here is I've already got I've already done one test fit. We're going to just stick this in here and get it lined up. And make sure the magnets are, are sort of pressing in. If I didn't have if I didn't have the magnets in place, then this metal would then the metal would flex out. So We'll get these pinned in place. And all I'm really looking for, again, is just sort of a sanity check. Just want to make sure that there's not anything uh, drastically off on this. And from what I can tell, you know, everything, uh, everything looks good. I had a little bit of concern because there was an indication of uh, 94 millimeter total height, which would also include the... Uh, uh, include the section here that I guess is sort of off screen just a little bit uh, for where the hinge would go uh, but then actually you take off almost take off around a millimeter because that hinge is actually a sixteenth of an inch thick so taking that into account and then just sort of getting everything pressed together uh, it looks like everything should fit should fit okay shouldn't be any problems as far as uh, as far as this lining up so this point what I'll start working on is I need to I'm going to CNC cut uh, these rib forms and uh, once I get that set up then I'll move on to, uh, to actually cutting out the forms as it turns out there's actually a little bit more testing that I want to do on this uh, on this aileron test section uh, one of the things that uh, that needs to be done is actually the end of the aileron, the outboard side of the aileron, is actually not completely square. It, Zenith actually has you essentially put a bevel into the into the end of the aileron so that it'll match up better with the with the wing tip. So actually you got sort of an unusual situation here that they want you to come in a hundred millimeters on this side and then from the other side you've actually got to come in 94 millimeters from the front and meet in the back. Actually one of the things that I was running into here was how best to try and transfer this uh, transfer this line around here and what I realized I could do is I've got this little piece of uh, scrap right here that's already got a, an eighth inch bend on it so looking around here all I have to do is this this wraps around quite neatly so you see I'm lined up on this side so I can easily transfer my line around onto the other side and be able to, to get my line transferred and then I'll be able to uh, continue my line on from here to be able to do my cutting. One other tip I'm going to bring up real quick, uh, sort of like the idea of, of earlier in the video I demonstrated using this uh, already pre-bent piece of aluminum to essentially be able to wrap my line around. 
like that idea so much that I actually went ahead and made up a, a couple of dedicated ones. So, for example, whenever I need to, to be able to wrap, wrap a line around a, an acute angle like this, then I've already got a pre-bent piece of metal, and of course it's already got a, got a circular profile that matches the type of uh, bend radius that, that I would normally have. And then a second one's been made up here for the purpose of, of transferring 90 degree angles, especially for example if I get into a situation where I need to uh, need to trans need to transfer from from say a vertical surface to a horizontal surface, then I've got the option of doing that as well. And then of course just keep it all on a little keychain because uh, if I don't do that, I'll almost certainly lose it. And this is something I you know, definitely know I'll be using when it comes when it comes time to. Uh, starting to do the, the full-size version of the aileron and flap skins. At this point I've trimmed the test aileron section down and what this rather ungainly setup here is, is an attempt to try and find out if the profile that I've produced here actually matches the form uh, dimensions as given in the plans. Essentially what I'm doing here as far as support this is uh, another use uh, of using a uh, these articulating arms, whether they're Noga type or the camera type, to support this, uh, to support the test section at this angle. I've got a similar one here. This one's based. On, this one's using a Noga arm, and then on the other side, there's support uh, using a camera arm uh, clamp and support. So what we'll do is uh, I'll get the camera repositioned so that we can take a look down inside here and see how this, how everything is lining up. This is a view looking down the profile of the test section with the essentially the, the tip is cut off and what you're seeing down here it's hard to hard to tell if how well this is showing up but I do have a set of lines drawn here to indicate the profile of the form I would be using for creating the end rib, the tip rib or yeah the tip rib for this aileron and the big thing I was looking for, of course, not only is matching the matching the profile down here, which for the most part it looks like it, it's pretty close. It, it's really sort of hard to get an exact measurement on something like this. But the other thing I wanted to find out was how much of a plane that my cut actually forms. And going along, mag this metal pointer and, and magnets uh, don't go well together. Uh, so following along here, we've got a good match up along here, and then coming back into here. Uh, we've got a good matchup. Where there's a little bit of concern is that I've got this gap here and just using a set of uh, gauge blocks that I have. Uh, if I try and run a four millimeter in there it doesn't quite make it through. If I run a three millimeter in uh, it does manage to get through for the most part. Uh, it can get through here. Uh, it's got a little bit of, of resistance right there so I'm looking at anywhere from a two to four millimeter gap. Now it's hard to tell at this point if it's really an issue of if I've got a measurement issue, if I've got maybe I cut just a little bit too much off. Uh, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm satisfied enough with what I'm seeing as far as the dimensions and things lining up to go ahead and make the go ahead and make the tip form. And when I actually form the tip rib itself, I mean there will be a little bit of play there. There is supposed to be a little bit of stick out of the rib, so this may not be be too big of an issue. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create my form as well as my blanks for the tip rib, and go ahead and do a test fit up for real at that point, and we'll find out how well this really fills in. But at this point, I mean, it's close enough to go ahead and give it a try. I don't know. I don't think it would be worthwhile to try and recut this again. So we'll just go ahead and move forward with creating the, making the tip rib, tip rib form and the uh, rib itself and just see how everything turns out.